Sorry to interrupt, but I have to break something to you. This isn't a cooking show. This is a story about what happens after the cooking show ends. It doesn't matter if it's a chocolate fudge dessert or a delicious roast chicken. Regardless of where you are, your number two looks exactly the same as mine. And everything you flush, rinse, and wash down the drain all goes to the same place. This story of our number twos begins at the end, at a place we all know of, but don't like to think about. It's the end of the line for your number twos, along with everything else that gets flushed down the pipes. So the wastewater treatment here at Logan City Council is a little different. They can turn your waste into something special. These small black lumps are a little different to the charcoal you get after your barbecue because this stuff is called biochar. Biochar could be the answer to the problem you didn't even know existed. And here to help us care a little bit more about our number twos is Joe Johnson. This treatment plant's been here since around the 1970s. It deals with sewage from all of Logan, um, so about 300,000 people. That's a lot of poo, Joe. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yes, so the biosolids that we have originally were 34,000 tonnes of very wet, sticky material, really not that great to be able to pump, do anything with. It's just not fun. And this wet, sticky sludge is hiding a problem, something buried deep inside, something that we need to get rid of. And here to help us understand is agricultural scientist Payal Sinha. Everything that we are consuming, which is, you know, one-time use, we are throwing away, these are all plastics that either end up in landfill or scary part is if we are consuming something in it, it's ending up in us. And it is everywhere. It is in our food, you know, how we love to put our food in the microwave, like easy to go meals. So every time we heat up plastic or freeze it, it breaks off thousands of microplastics that go into our food and on this cute baby spoon. Yes, that contains microplastics. Exactly how much plastic are we eating? We're consuming about a credit card a month in plastics. Is there anything else we have to be worried about? Yes. PFAS is perfluoroalkyl substances. It's long fluorines, it doesn't break down in the environment. It's a really that kind of forever chemical. It is getting banned from being used in things, but it's like fire retardants. Non-stick frying pans. Microwave popcorn. It's a useful chemical. It's just not great for us. Now that we know how bad all this stuff is that we just flushed away without thinking, what did we actually do with the biosolids before biochar? Biosolids was a waste. It was something that we had to pay someone to dispose with. Previously, 36 trucks, and we're going up to the Darling Down, so six trucks per day, six days a week. So Joe, how much does Logan City Council actually pay for our sludgy poop to be taken away? So at the time when we were doing the planning report, it was about $1.8 million per year. $1.8 million a year? That's enough to make anyone clench their butt cheeks. That's risen to around 2.4 to nearly 3 million. What? Joe, please tell me that's a joke so I can stop clenching. When biosolids are trucked out to the Darling Downs or to anywhere for a land application, it was a traditional process that put nutrients back into the soil. However, with things like sludge mineralization, which is the release of carbon dioxide and methane back into the atmosphere, it's not a great thing on, on the carbon scale. If we went our traditional route, it's about 160,000 tonnes per annum of carbon into the atmosphere. Let me do some quick math. Carry the four, square root of nine. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's just as I thought. That's a lot of carbon, Joe. The other point of it is that wastewater treatment plants capture everything. Like, it's not like we can say, no, you cannot put that rinse aid down the sink or any of those types of things. We, we're going to get it. 
So when you apply biosolids to land, you are applying these trace elements that come through and then they build up. Those really, really small plastics, they do get end up back in the soil. So after discussing the dangers of microplastics, the pitfalls of PFAS and the drawbacks of biosolids, we've arrived at the part of the story where our main character has to spill the beans. Tell us your secrets, Joe. How do you make biochar? Mm. Please? To get to biochar, we have to dry it. Firstly, it goes to what we call the dewatering stage. So the same sort of thing as what you'd see with a washing machine. It then goes to the drying stage, which is the same as an oven. It's just on a pelt. It uses the renewable heat energy taken from the gas supply to dry those biosolids so it's been 90% dry. It then goes to the gasifier, which is a half, and that heats it up to about 650 degrees. The biosolids would drop in from the top, hit the first plate, and it spins slowly like a clock. And once it hits the bottom, it will be a carbonised product. So you're basically removing off all the gases and those gases then go to the oxidizer to be treated. And that gas is what we use for the renewable energy. What's left is just that solid stream and that carbon material making a biochar. Okay, so now that we have this material, which is charred at such a high degree, yes, it does not have microplastics because it gets destroyed, doesn't have PFAS and pops. Again, a lot of it is destroyed. It becomes a, a material which can help in huge microbial growth, increase pH, has high water holding capacity, all of which is really important in agriculture. So farmers will like it. Biochar is made up of about 52% carbon, which is sequestered carbon, and that's fixed. So it's locked in, it doesn't move out into the environment. The farmers, the environmentalists, and the corporate ladder climbers will like that too. Biochar, which is of value, can then be used in all these other different ways. Is it going to be activated carbon? Is it going to be used in soil remediation? There's so much value and potential here. It's now actually something that is a product of value and going back into the economy. And that will make Joe, Payal, this majestic pelican and the whole planet a happier place. Okay, panic attack avoided. So not only can I stop clenching, but for the sake of the planet, you should too. Who would have thought that the diet cheating mistakes of today could become the planet saving solutions of tomorrow? Joe and her team at the Logan City Council have achieved what many thought impossible, a safe biochar product made entirely from human waste, but with some Earth-sized bonuses. I, I love working in, in this type of environment and doing something actively about climate change. I do hope that this is the catalyst for not only having a gasification facilities in Australia, but throughout the world, because what it's doing is solving an age old problem that we have that drives me to keep on doing these types of projects. What's cool though is we're not shy about saying, there's this cool project that we're doing, you can do it too. With Payal and the other scientists deep into the testing and research of biochar, it could soon be used in more industries than we ever could imagine. And hopefully gasification plants like this one can soon be turning your number twos into the black gold that we actually want. Because in the not too distant future, part of the answer to the world's greatest threat could be that we make the number two solution our number one priority. <laughs>